For more on whether antitrust laws help or hurt U.S. businesses, uh, former SEC Chair Jay Clayton's here. He's a CNBC contributor, and of course, the portfolio of Apollo, American Express, and so many others uh, are also part of your life. I I'm curious what you thought of the interview, and also just the approach that you think this administration has been taking. Uh, well, let me break those into two yep. parts. The, I thought the interview was fantastic because I thought Jonathan was very candid about his view of how the antitrust laws should be applied uh, to our economy. He, he, was, he was very direct saying, look, market power and size are something that we worry about. And in, I think in many cases what we're seeing is market power and size are presumptively a problem, particularly in the merger context. And, you, and your view is they should not be presumptively well, that's a shift. Look, my, my own view, and I, I, right. I would not call myself an antitrust expert. I, I think I, I do understand the regulatory state. Um, that's not where I would be. I think that, you know, consumer welfare um, as a consideration over the last, let's call it 40 years, has served our economy and our consumers very well. I mean, the, the, I, I could pull out my iPhone and say, look, the price that we pay for that kind of computing power in our pocket is remarkable. Consumers all benefit from it. Um, you know, what would we right. do if you we were had stifled? With me yesterday, it? totally. There. Well, well, look. Let, I mean, to talk about regulation, when Apple went public in 1980, it was blocked in some states. I won't name them as too risky. Hmm. Can you imagine that a Apple, the, the, the largest right. and I would say one of the most influential companies in the world, delivering amazing things to consumers cheaply. every day cheaply? It was viewed as too risky an investment um, by state regulators. I, th I think that, that, that that's a lesson. What if you're doing everything fair and you're not a monopoly and you're just so good at it that you have power and, and size? Well, our law, is, our law is pretty clear. If you're doing everything fair and you have... Well, he just have, said if it's power and size, you don't have to be doing right. anything wrong. I think, I think where he was drawing the line was when you have power and size, if you're adding through so acquisitions, yeah. right. that they're going mean, to look at that. One of the we that. talked about yesterday was just the idea that even when he's not bringing a case, mm -hmm. in a way, this administration has effectively intimidated right. corporate America, right. rightly or wrongly, mm -hmm. into not pursuing deals and other transactions that, that they might otherwise want to try to do in, in other, w with another administration in place. Well, th that does get to the, look, do I agree with where they are? I think incredibly restrictive. I, uh, Gary Cohn and I, published an op-ed saying right. the FTC is you know, presumptively anti-merger. The use of what I would say is foreign regulators to achieve domestic policy objectives is absurd. Um, but at least we know, right? At least businesses can plan. If you uh, know- Wait if, a second, it, it wasn't different in the last administration. Uh, the President Trump himself squashed some deals. I mean, ask AT&T about what they went through, thinking that they were doing just fine with what they were bringing with the deal they were bringing up. It, it seems to me that if you're a business and you're looking for certainty, it's disappeared for a decade. I, you, I agree. The more, the more certainty, the better for people to plan. These are 5, 10, 15 year decisions. You need, you need certainty, and you particularly need right. certainty, not, not in the you? political cycles. But don't you think that we're now at a time, and I don't know if you think it's this administration, by the way, the Trump administration may, may have been similar. And, and some people, I don't know who you think is going to win in 2024, but the, the populist left and the populist right, if you will, thinks that there's not enough competition today. I, I think, Andrew, on that, we do have a bit of a nostalgic view of competition, right? We, 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 we talk about competition in our domestic market of 350, 360 million people in a world that's you know, going to 8 billion people where we're deeply integrated with China you know, and the like. Not looking at markets on a global basis for what I would say is clearly global industries is a mistake. But when you look at prices, and I, I'm not gonna, I hate to pick on them, but you look at the airlines, mm -hmm. for example, and you can see prices, especially, by the way, in an inflationary environment, they're right? 1975 some people, levels. Some people will say they're 1975 levels. The best deal but in town. There have been periods of time in the airline space where there was a lot more competition. There just was. There was a lot more competition than there is today. It's impossible. That, that what I'm saying is empirical. There was more competition. There were more slots. There were more. Uh, there were the incumbents. There were the um, you know, JetBlue. At one point, was actually a discount carrier. I mean, it was just a different marketplace. 
I love my iPhone. Mm -hmm. I love it. I actually like the safety and I like the app store. I love everything I'm about it. put you on People Express in a big But way. I'm also, in uh, I, I hope, intellectually honest enough to, to be able to say that I also recognize that this is a, that this is now the conduit uh, and is effectively the f front door Keep store for a lot, for, for a lot of uh, people selling product to consumers. I get that. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to, we as a society have to decide what, what's supposed to happen. I actually like it this way, but other people may not. Well, including including shopping for airline tickets, you can you can compare prices across airlines and, and routes in what five minutes using using your phone. Imagine how much faster that is than when you used to have to call up and. I think oh, you're saying I mean, it's, it's it's actually re yeah. remarkable. There's so few players left. No, 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 no. I'm not saying they're colluding. I'm just saying that there's less. Less, there's well, just less competition. I, 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 would argue, I would argue that there's that there's more competition because there's more information available to the consumer. All about I, so that's actually an interesting, t uh, by the way, I love that piece of it because there is so much more information and that allows the customer to actually go, go where they want to go. When I was at the SEC, the most powerful thing you could do was provide price transparency to people in the marketplace. If they know exactly what they're paying for a particular product, they can shop and drive prices down. Like, you know, the right. cost of access for retail investors. So that's a has piece, by the way, that we down. never hear about. You never hear regulators say we're going to, because of access to information, it's going to change.